guide me with your counsel, and afterward you take me into glory, says Psalm 73, 24. Good morning, and welcome to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn Delakian, here with the good news on business to share with you God's will and word uh, about your business and about your life in general. But most importantly today, our focus is on business, and that's why we call our show The Good News on Business. For those of you who are listening for the first time, each week we come to you with a goal to uh, reach out and help you to walk in integrity in your business life as well as your personal life. And um, we uh, do our best to point you to scriptures that uh, would uh, help you to understand that all the advice you need for business as well as your general life is right there in God's holy word. He wants to be part of your life in every aspect and uh, especially in your business life. And so many of us forget that. And uh, uh, it's important to be brought back to center, and that's the Bible. And uh, our topic today is health is wealth. And I can think of no better person to talk to us about that than Dr. James Prudian, who's the owner of the Natural Healthcare Center. And uh, he'll tell you more about himself in a second when I introduce him. But it's always exciting to have Dr. Prudian on because he's always filled with information that I love to hear about. I could just listen to him talk for hours. But we only have one hour today, so we'll squeeze in what we can and we'll get him back in the future. But again, today's title of the show is Health is Wealth. And if you're in business or not, this is a very important topic that you want to listen in close to. As we do each week, uh, we start off with scriptures that God put on my heart during the week. Some of them, it looks very clearly what it's all about, that it ties right into our title. And sometimes I read them and I say, Lord, how does this, what does this have to do with the show? But it's a Holy Spirit-led show, and He always brings it back together by the end, and it makes sense by then. So we'll start off with the three scriptures He put on my heart this week. First off, Proverbs 7, 7 to 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. 2 Kings 25. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. 3 John 2. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And speaking about wellness and going well, I'd love to introduce um, uh, my good friend, Dr. James Prudian, who's not only a chiropractor, but also the um, owner and uh, founder of Natural Health Center. And he's got so many things going on. James, thanks for taking the time out this morning and joining us. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for having me back. Uh, no problem. And uh, uh, Dr. James is a regular guest because he just, every time we get to the end of the show, I say, there's so much more we need to talk about. <laughs> we got to get you back. So I think this is your third visit. So maybe we're on a schedule like every five or six months or something. Yeah, it seems to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's probably Powerful stuff, so I'm glad you're here. Why don't you just refresh our audience, tell them a little bit about who you are and what you're doing. Sure. Um, where I'm at my career, I'm 17 years into my career now, and uh, the Lord has just uh, uh, delivered so much. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of sum uh, summarize it, uh, prudinhealthcare.com, that's my portal page to what I do. Uh, Natural Healthcare Center is in West End, uh, Long Branch. It's an 8,000 square foot, uh, three-story building that does about seven or eight uh, different services. We have a staff of about 17. We've gone from three to 17 in the last uh, seven years. Um, one of my companies is Wellness at Work. Wellness at Work is on a uh, statewide and in 2012 a na uh, national campaign. I'll be uh, becoming a national speaker into next year. Mm -hmm. And what Wellness at Work is, um, it is an on-site health education company. So we use health literacy as to keep the longevity as our tagline. And I am all over the state. I'll be at the NJEA this uh, Friday speaking to the teachers. And um, that program is centered around health literacy. What is God's plan by design? How do we learn about physical, nutritional, psychological uh, ways to improve, how to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible? Obviously, it's all under God's design, mm -hmm. but I do everything within my power to better educate the audiences as to what man has done <laughs> uh, to this unbelievable design that the Lord gave us. Yeah. Um, and finally, a company called Put Back What You Lack, which is an online uh, store. And I'll be launching drprudian.com by the end of the year, which is going to be a video blog. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, trying to get out information again on the health literacy side. Um, so that's what we've been doing. And I think that's, there's a lot there, but I think it's so powerful. And I think the common theme with you, Doc, is getting people educated, getting yes. people to understand. And, uh, yeah, it's a big part of our lives. Uh, we don't realize what we put in our mouths and what we do out there. I know as a business owner especially, you know, you get so caught up in time and, 
and you're focused on your business and, and the last thing all of a sudden, oh, it's lunch, uh, give me something real quick, you know, or right. whatever. In the morning, you're running in and it's like, uh, I, I know from first hand experience, I don't think I've shared this with you, but a couple of years ago, I was in that just uh, work, 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 work mode and I actually fell into the trap of stopping at fast food places and all that stuff. And within six months, I couldn't believe it. Cause I, I literally remember like a switch flicking where I stopped worrying about my diet and all I was focused on was my business. And I would. I, I, I didn't have time for lunch. Oh, I'll stop and I'll pick up some finger food here. Or I didn't yeah. have time for breakfast. Oh, I'll run in and I'll grab a sandwich real quick. Something that was easy to eat. Very easy to do. Yeah, and, and, and in a few months, my blood pressure went through the roof. I felt like a truck hit me every day. I went to my best friend who was a GP, and he goes, your blood pressure through the roof. You're always textbook. What are you doing? And the amazing thing was, it was all diet. And, and I changed the diet, and in like 45 days, 30, 45 days, I was back to normal. My blood pressure was textbook again, and I just cognizantly realized, what am I doing with myself? Now, I went nowhere near the level that you teach, but it was unbelievable. I couldn't have imagined it. Yeah, I think teaching is just that. Teaching using the literal physiological properties and biochemical properties, it's not magic. I mean, this is science, and we are made up of, if you look at God's design, we are made up of five things, bone, water, air, muscle, and fat. Now, we need five things, protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water, to nourish those five things. Mm -hmm. And when you break it down and spend as many years in school as we all do, learning the subject matter of human physiology, biochemistry, histology, you realize that there is a mechanism to the way we should be eating, in your case, so that the body does not, or that we could prevent, behavioral induced diseases. Mm -hmm. Now I understand there's a genetic factor, but it's behavioral induced diseases and problems that we're up against in a tsunami in our, not only our culture, but in worldwide. Mm -hmm. By the year 2012, the World Health Organization estimates that the second leading cause of disability across the world will be depression. Mm -hmm. Now the cost of something like that, along with the type two diabetes, the obesity, all of the chronic illnesses, I look at wellness at work, and you brought up the education word. When we look at what Einstein said, one of my favorite people, he said, if you give me an hour to solve a problem, I'm going to spend 50 minutes talking about it and 10 minutes coming up with a solution. Mm -hmm. And I find myself that way. I like to talk through before we say, oh, go do this. Right. And I think our culture is very quick to say, oh, go do this, or mm -hmm. go do this, right. or go do this, and no one learns. Mm -hmm. So the process of education is one that we have to step back and say, well, what is what are the principles of physical, nutritional, stress management, psychological, to better equip me to avoid behavioral, environmentally induced diseases? Mm -hmm. And I know you've thought through so much of this stuff with so much detail besides the education and you spend, this is your life, I know, and you're really focused on it. And that's why I love having you on the show. So we don't really, and for those of you who are listening, we don't really plan out this show. We, we see where God's going to take us. And, and one thought came to mind I always wanted to ask you, you know, uh, and um, it may be a weird question to answer it however you like, whatever's best. But, um, you know, we're both from the same ethnic background. We're both Armenian. And I always wondered that... When you grow up in a certain ethnic background, like when you come from a foreign country to this country, right, you're used to a certain diet, eating a certain way, eating a certain type of food and all that stuff. Then you get thrust into our society, and, and like you said, you made me think of it, this tsunami of food, right? I mean, last night I had sushi, the night before I had Chinese, the night before, you know, I mean, it's like whatever you want, it's out there, you can have barbecue. Have so now you take this basic diet we grew up on, right? Tell me if my concept is flawed here. You're right and, on. And, and you're plugging along and it's going well, and then all of a sudden you get older and you're exposed to all these different foods and you're eating all these different things. How does that impact your body? I mean, does someone coming from like an Asian country and moving into the United States and acclimating to their food culture really doing a job on their body? It's amazing you brought the subject matter up. In practice, the two sectors or two groups of people that right now I'm seeing more and more is Asian, Chinese, mm -hmm. and India. These are two huge countries which lots of people are now coming to America. And you see the way they, they eat and their ethnic background in their countries. Then you see them here just five years into this country. Mm -hmm. They've already, they already have the precursors to type 2 diabetes. They're already on the road or, wow. or obese. Now these are countries that eat mm -hmm. relatively good diets. So first things first, when I meet with them, I'm like, this stop, please go back to when you were eight <laughs> years old. Right. Or like when we were kids growing up in an Armenian house, right. in an Armenian home, you, we ate similar diets. Right. Ethnic food or ethnicity or where we're from, I think a lot of people need to reground themselves mm -hmm. in what grandparents, 
our those those you know, those old people, you know, those, those old weird old people years and years ago, they really had a lot of this figured out, mm. which was how they farmed their own food, shopped, bought, and traded for their own food in local communities. And that's what part of clinical nutrition and looking at um, the world environmentally is getting back to community-oriented food programs where there's co-ops, where there's a local farmer who grows his mm -hmm. food, he comes to the town square, you show up with your reusable bags, right. and you take what you need for the week. Mm -hmm. And a part of our culture and in America is just what you're saying, which is ethnic groups come to America, they migrate to America, immigrate to America. Our grandparents did from right. the genocide of right. Armenian genocide. And from 1924 to now, we, my family has lived in America. Mm -hmm. And I look at the effect of eating the way we did growing up versus eating the American style right. diet, which is starch, sugar, fillers, dairy, things that are basically fill us up, but are very nutrient deficient. Well, you know, we're going to talk more about that after the break. I can't believe we're on the break already. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's funny because maybe somebody's listening right now and saying, hey, what does this all have to do with business? And I think you said this to me first, and I, I've used it over and over again, so I'll give you the credit. <laughs> but uh, we spend the first half of our life amassing wealth and spend the second half of our life spending our wealth to get our health back, right? Um, and uh, it's it's amazing. I, I know I butchered that, but uh, the, <laughs> a little point, bit. <laughs> the point is that uh, the point is that business guys, especially, I see it all the time. We're out there, we're killing ourselves, and then when we're fifty, all of a sudden we go, oh, "What happened?" You know, and and now we take all that that we earned and built, and it's shot because we don't have our health. So, health is wealth is the theme today on the Good News for Business. And this is Glenn DeLake, and your host on Tandem Radio Live here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, again, just like to welcome not only our regional listeners on the six FM stations that are broadcast through the Bridge FM, but also that uh, the internet listeners at tandempath.com. If you haven't been to tandempath.com, you need to go check it out. It's filled with information. You'll have a link there to Dr. Prudian and to his websites. You'll have information on previously archived show. You'll even get to see us because we have a camera in the studio. So uh, we'd love to have you check in and see what we're doing on TandemRadio.com. We'll be back right after this break. Check out these sponsors. They're out there, and they'll help you. Well, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn DeLakian, with the good news on business. And we have Dr. James Prudian in the studio today. And, uh, boy, we have so much to cover. And uh, I know his mind is going a million miles a minute because uh, we come up with ideas as we're flowing. And thank you, Lord, for those ideas because it is all about God, and he puts it all in our hearts and our minds, and uh, it's for us to use. And uh, we're going to start off this segment again with the um, scriptures for today. Proverbs 7, 7, 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. 2 Kings 25. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. And 3 John 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Some translations actually say, Dear friend, I pray above all that you may enjoy good health. And good health is so important. And I want to come back to that topic from the last uh, segment we were in, uh, the health is wealth concept. And uh, I'm going to let you, James, say um, uh, the quote again about the first <laughs> half of your life and the second half of your life. And then we're going to talk about something uh, you mentioned to me called deconditioning. But let's start with that quote again. Sure. We expend our health to obtain wealth, right. and then we spend our wealth to try to regain our health. That's right. And that's, uh, I don't know where it came from. It's uh, <laughs> something that I, I stumbled upon. Well, it's yours ago. now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's so true. We spend the first half of our life doing one thing, and then the second half of our life struggling with the other. And unfortunately, we usually do so much damage, you can't regain the health, right? Well, y yes and no. That's the beautiful part of God's design, which is it's amazing what we can retract from, meaning that we are in a deconditioned state. Let's talk about the word deconditioning. Throughout our lives, the nutritional, the physical, and the psychological will eventually have a toll if we're doing things behaviorally that affect us. So we end up in a deconditioned state. What does that mean? We go to our doctor, our cholesterol is up, our tri triglycerides are up, maybe our sugar is now 100, 105. We don't feel so well. We're not sleeping like we used to. We get three or four hours, we can fall back asleep, or we wake up tired. That's mm -hmm. a key thing. If we wake up fatigued, we're supposed to wake up refreshed and full of energy. So if these are, these are 
factors that correlate with the word deconditioning. We're in this process of deconditioning, Glenn. And so, okay, so we did the hematology. We got our blood taken. We go over it, and real simple, cheap things to do. Get a tape measure. A woman, if the waist is greater than 35 inches. A man, if the waist is greater than 40 inches. That's a cheap, inexpensive way to say, my waistline is expanding, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we go over what I call the mirror tests, and we... I make a joke when I lecture, you know, go into the bathroom, get into a full-length mirror, strip down to your underwear, dim the lights if necessary, <laughs> and basically test your physical. Can you bend over and touch your toes with your legs straight? Can you do a full squat, legs parallel to the ground with the heels on the ground? Can you do a lunge without, without falling over? Mm. Can you stand on one foot for 30 seconds staring at yourself in a mirror? Basic human physiological motion patterns. Mm. So this process of deconditioning is very easy for a guy like me or people like me to pick up. Now that's the process that you want to get before the heart attack, before the type 2 diabetes, before you need shoulder surgery or mm. back surgery or knee surgery, mm. not because of trauma to those joints, but because of deconditioning. That's the process to catch long before now we put you in a reconditioning formula. Right. What is right for the person? How do we go correct these problems and have a 100% reversal of the original condition? Well, you know, it's funny because it seems like our society is set up to decondition people. I mean, uh, It is. Because if you think of us as farmers, we woke up, we went and physically used our body, we ate very lean foods, we shopped organically with our neighbors and friends 100, 200, 300 years ago. And so when you look at their lifestyle compared to ours, we are a sedentary lifestyle. Mm. So I go to corporate America, in and out of corporate America, and I'm measuring. This is what I do the mirror test. I do it with a digital camera, and I measure angles, and I teach people do these exercises and stretch these muscles, blah, blah, blah. But one thing, if you think about it, there's a disease out there right now, the recent disease, it's called fatty liver disease. <laughs> Now, I, I think the guys have run out of ways to name diseases. So, okay, now this is a serious thing. This is when the, the cells inside your liver actually start to die and they're replaced by fat. So mm -hmm. sedentary lifestyle from type 2 diabetes, for instance, and obesity, because obesity and being a bit chubby can lead or lead to this thing called fatty liver disease. And this eventually leads to liver cirrhosis, which is basically mm -hmm. cellular death scar tissue building up where those cells used to be in your liver. Now the first four letters of the word liver are live. You can't live without a liver. So that's why liver transplants, and we look at transplanting, that's why this is so epidemic, because people or our fellow Americans are living a sedentary lifestyle with the nutritional, the physical, and the psychological deconditioning them right. to a point, and that is a point then of no return because now you're looking at a transplant. Mm. So it's reeling people back in. I always use the, I know they can't see me, but I'm making <laughs> like I'm reeling in a fish. I always tell my patients, reel you back in. Let's get you back down to a place. Let's recondition you and get you out of this deconditioned state. Mm. You know, well, let me ask you this uh, along with that. Do the little things really make a difference? Like, for example, you know, I, I've been walking more. So, like, I walk, um, you know, three to five miles a night, whatever, um, you know, whether I go down to the boardwalk or whatever, uh, you know, try to watch my diet a little bit, those kind of things. Do those little things really matter? I do. I tell, I, when I, I do this, uh, uh, part of my program is dealing with CEOs, HR directors, and more of the higher escalon of an organization, and then I deal with the regular workers of an organization. Right. I don't care who you are, you're a human being. We all need to move. Motion is life. God told us that, right? But motion is life. We're not designed to sit all day. So if you think about it, we sleep for eight hours. That's not moving. We get in a car, we drive to and from work. We sit at work, and then we sit in front of a TV set. That sounds to me like a lot of sitting and a lot right. of sedentary. So you getting up and walking, first of all, it's a good thing to do at night after you eat. That's what our grandparents used to do back to those farmers <laughs> who didn't watch the world blow up in 60-inch television sets, which I oppose greatly. At night, you want to defuse, bring your energy levels low, get ready for bed. And walking is a wonderful activity. So those small things absolutely make sense. What I teach to people in the organizations that I go to too. Shop and cook your own food. Mm. Don't leave your house without your guns loaded because if you're leaving the house and you're gonna get hungry, you're gonna fall into the trap that you fell in right. a couple of years ago, which is you run for the drive through mm. So we all need to. The, the whole question is the secret behind 
getting our society back to the original plan, God's plan, is that we're the secret of making changes. If all of us started to not drink as much soda, if all of us started to eat better foods, to exercise our bodies, and to use the noodle between our ears as a calming tool, particularly later in the day, then that would lead to less incidents of behavioral induced chronic illness. Mm. And, you know, when you talk about uh, making your own food and preparing, uh, obviously it's like uh, a business concept. If you're going to go into business, you're going to go with the right tools, you're going to go out to work, you got to have the right tools at work, you got to have the right tools in the car, whatever you're going to do or take. So it's the same way here. You, you want to go out and make sure that your food plan is right. in place. Not only, like food plan is very important, like great point, but let's also think about what do we feed ourselves with in the car? Like now we all have smartphones right. and cars that have Bluetooth and all this stuff, are we listening to podcasts of our favorite pastors? Are right. we what are we feeding our brain with? Because mm -hmm. that's psychological. That's an important component of our health. Then throughout our day, I know many people have sedentary jobs. I teach them to take micro breaks. Mm -hmm. You get up, you do some wall squats, you do something at your desk a few times a day or at lunchtime you go for the walk. You do something physical throughout your day. Think of yourself as a farmer. So yes, when we look at the small tools of being prepared every day in our walk will lead to a better healthy lifestyle so that we make clearer better decisions about our businesses and we are better business people because we're not as tired we're not as lethargic mm -hmm. and we have more physical energy what about sleep real quick because we're coming up on another break yeah. um, you know obviously sleep's important i heard someone speaking one time saying that uh, you know the best time to get to sleep is is before midnight and uh, you know, to, to, to in order to get a good peaceful sleep, you know, the earlier you go to bed, the better. I mean, is all that really tie in there? Or the it is. Sleep can be a bit complicated too, because many people are struggling with hormonal imbalances, particularly over the age of 30, 35. Um, a stressful lifestyle is going to lead to hormonal imbalances. And please remember, cholesterol is a hormone made by your liver. Mm. So as cholesterol rises, that's just not dietary cholesterol. That's also serum cholesterol. Serum means blood. So our blood chemistry, as that cholesterol goes up, many times is a precursor to stress. Now back to stress or living a stressful lifestyle and running around late in the day, again, watching the TV and doing stressful activities like being on a treadmill at nine o'clock at night just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. As we do these things, our bodies are designed to wind down and sleep peacefully, yes, well before 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. getting to bed well before 12 o'clock. And we talk about establishing a consistent sleep-wake cycle. Go to bed around the same time every night, wake up around the same time every morning. We're not in college. Right. We don't sleep from 4 to 5 in the afternoon and stay up until 3 in the morning. Remember how sick we all were back then? Because we need to establish that uh, consistent sleep-wake cycle. And is there a amount of time somebody should really be getting sleep in? Yeah, the old adage is 8 hours. I think it, it, if someone ha is dealing with stress hormones, it's more like 9 hours or 10 hours mm -hmm. because we have to repay our sleep debt. If we have a sleep debt, at some point you got to pay the piper and you have to get to bed and repay that debt while your body go undergoes this reconditioning process. Sleep debt, real quick. Um, when I take a nap, uh, come, when I come home from church on Sunday and I take a nap <laughs> for two hours, does that pay for me to do that? Is that paying one back of the to healthiest that? things? One of the healthiest things a human being could do is take a little siesta in the afternoon. <laughs> Good to know that. Good to know that. You're listening to Tandem Radio Live. We're here with Dr. Prudin. Got so much information to cover. It's amazing. God has built an amazing mechanism and. Uh, we don't do enough to take care of it, for sure. So at least most of us don't, myself included. So Dr. Prudian is here to show us how to do some of that today, and you can get more information on him as you uh, move ahead. And go to his websites and uh, look at our website. TandemRadio.com is filled with great information that will help you immensely. TandemRadio.com is just a powerful resource, and we'd love to send you there. And uh, we'd love to get your information there, too. Feel free to send in your questions at info at TandemRadio.com. Once we get those questions, uh, we do our best to answer them, sometimes on the air. Uh, we got some good ones last week, actually, sometimes on the air, and sometimes we'll just email you back directly. But we do pray about them and search them and get you the best answer we can think of. We'll be back right after these words. Well, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. We're here this morning with Dr. James Prudian, the owner of Natural Health Care and uh, just a person engrossed in the health system and understanding how to bring our bodies back uh, from what we've done to them in many cases. And it's interesting because uh, God wants us to live healthy, happy lives. Uh, Proverbs 7, 7, 8 today, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. 
2 Kings 25, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will hear and heal you. Now, that kind of ties into what we were talking about the last segment about how you can decondition. Uh, Hezekiah, for those of you who may not remember, the king was dying at this point and he was in bad shape and uh, uh, it was it. And he went to the Lord, prayed, and, and God uh, did a turnaround and told him, we're going to give you 15 more years. So obviously there had to be some deconditioning going on there for sure. But um, we're here talking today about health is wealth. And if you're a business owner or a business-related person and you're wondering what, what are we talking about diet for on a business show, this is so important. I think one of the keys I want to make clear is that it's not necessarily about living longer, although that's desirable by most people, but it's living healthier. How many people you see sometimes are in their 50s and they're shot already? I mean, who wants to be injecting needles and dealing with drugs and all that stuff when you're 50 years old? I mean, you're just coming out of the gate at 50, and uh, you could have a pretty powerful stride if you take care of yourself. But yet we see so many people suffering in this country. It's amazing. And I think, Dr. James, tell me if I'm wrong, I think many of the diseases worse or conditions, let's say, that we're suffering from in the United States are foreign to people in other countries who are not living this crazy lifestyle. Would you say that? Yeah, it's very true. I mean, when, you, when you look at 50% of Americans die from heart disease, mm. another one-third of us die from cancer, or close to one-third. That's a large group of people. When you look at other cultures, there's places in Africa where you know heart disease is foreign to them mm. because of their, the lifestyle there. Now, I'm not saying that uh, the lifestyle they're living right. uh, is, is similar to an industrial lifestyle. But when you go back and you look at the industrialization mm -hmm. of how we live our lifestyle, yes, there is a 78% of all health care visits, Glenn. That means you know three out of four doctor's visits in America are due to chronic illness. Mm -hmm. That's not acute illness. Acute illness is I fell off a ladder and I broke my arm. I need to go to a doctor immediately. Right. So chronic illness is heart disease, type 2 diabetes, uh, uh, obesity, high blood pressure, hypertension, osteoporosis, things related to arth uh, oste all of the arthritis, um, all of the autoimmune diseases that are out there. The host of chronic illness over the last 20, 30, 40 years mm -hmm. um, has literally plagued the system, and the system is overloaded and the cost of it at not right now is 16 percent of the GDP yeah. so well, yeah sure when we look at that health care costs four times more than national defense mm -hmm. in our country yeah. we have a system that is being utilized due primarily to chronic illness mm -hmm. and the chronic illness tsunami encompasses many components and those many components are foreign to many other places in the world mm -hmm. they are self Induced right. self responsibility, yeah. self induced. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, diabetes is one of those diseases, right? I mean, it's like type two diabetes. Here, so I think, yeah, and type two. Right. Yeah, and it's uh, incredible. I mean, even to the extent, if you're not realizing, if you don't have diabetes, it's amazing how many people do. And even to the extent it's become an industry, treating it, it's become like an industry with all these commercials on TV and all this crazy stuff. Yeah, and there's many things like there's a condition called, and uh, your viewers could uh, look it up online. Uh, called uh, metabolic syndrome. It's also called uh, um, insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Now that's the syndrome prior to getting type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. So you would think, right, you would think that as a country we want to capture people who have metabolic syndrome because it's a hundred percent reversible. Oh, okay. So you would say, okay, like when they come into my office I get all excited because I have a metabolic syndrome patient because in my brain I'm saying, wow, that person's not going to develop type 2 diabetes if they follow these steps. And there are black and white ways to diagnose metabolic syndrome, which is also called insulin resistance, or syndrome X. Mm -hmm. It has a bunch of names. And when you look at that one condition, which is treatable, preventable, and reversible, mm -hmm. the cost of type 2 diabetes would fall radically if, as a country, we identified it, we knew what to do for it, and more and more physicians were out there saying, you have this, let's do this. Well, I think so many people are in their false understanding, obviously with health, but take type 2 di diabetes. You're saying that it can be derailed. In other words, somebody's on the way to getting type 2 di diabetes, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't cases. have to be. It doesn't have to be. Yes, there's always a, there can be a genetic component. So I don't want to be naive to the fact that there is a genetic component 
to illness, mm -hmm. to chronic illness. But when you see, I'm, we see in practice, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds who are already being di diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I'll give you a great example of this, Glenn. When, we, when I went to school, other healthcare practitioners who are listening right now went to school, we learned that type 2 diabetes was called adult onset diabetes. Mm, right. They renamed it mm. because now children get it. Mm. So type 2 diabetes, now that children get it, you can't call it adult onset anymore. Right. And to, make, to be very, very clear, this is very different than type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes you're born with, that's a genetic condition, okay. and you're insulin dependent for the rest of your life. Mm, okay. So on this type 2 diabetes, are we creating this in our children with their diets and so forth? Absolutely. And w that's an absolute. When you look at and you everybody can go to the CDC like I do, and CDC is a free resource, you look at... From the, 70, the 1970s, we were at a 5% childhood obesity ratio. Mm. In the 80s, it doubled to 10%. In the 90s, it doubled to, uh, not doubled, went up another 10%. We're up to 33% wow. of our children are clinically obese. Now, yeah, one third of our children. One third. Now, one third of adults. Now, it, and, and children. If we look at this, Glenn, the statistic is if we have an obese child, they have an 80 to 90 percent chance of remaining obese as an adult. Mm. Now, I, I don't want to be cruel, but I've made an observation, you know, I, and I could be way off on this, but do the parents have the huge impact of control over the BC of their kids? Well, let's, I mean, go, they, let's go back to the parents. The first half of our conversation, we were talking about us, mm -hmm. the us of our lifestyle, those business owners out there, the human beings out there, the 30, 40, 50 year olds who are raising children, the ones running around with their uh, smartphones and running, running, running. How? What are they doing psychologically, nutritionally, mm -hmm. and physically for their children? Mm -hmm. Go outside and play are my favorite words in the human language. Literally, go outside and play. It's the best thing you can do for your child. Organized sports have their place, but it's not like a child going outside, climbing a tree, jumping on a bicycle, then grabbing a football. Children play. Their attention span is typically limited, so that it's multidimensional. Right. They'll grab a ball, then they'll grab a bat, then they'll jump on a swing. That's the way children were designed to play. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the design of a child, absolutely parents have a direct impact on what their children are doing and what we're feeding our children. My house is a monarchy. Let make no mistake, it's not a democracy. All right, don't become a democracy where they move. My, you eat the way we eat. This is it. This is, this is the rules of the home. And parents, uh, you know, we all need to do a really better job of understanding why pediatric obesity is now an epidemic in the United States. So next time I see an obese child, I can go up to the parent and shake them and say, what are you doing to this now, kid? Yes and no. <laughs> now we, we have to play doctor first, and we have to make sure that the child doesn't have a thyroid disorder or right. a disorder that can cause childhood obesity, which is just being a good doctor. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, then you look at behavior, and you have to look at the parents and Mm -hmm. of where the obesity is coming so from. So that's more the exception, though, than the rule. It is. It's yeah. absolutely the exception, yeah. yes. Okay. So I'm not trying to get parents off the hook. You know, that's my point. That's my point, too. <laughs> absolutely. We have a responsibility. Right. So so what about, you know, as Americans, a lot of times, and this is probably a huge topic, but we only have, like, two minutes to cover it. As Americans, we tend to lean on technology like crazy, right? I mean, take our military, for example. You know, we've scaled down our military because we have this high-tech military now. And, of course, it's effective and it works. How is technology, new changes, new things we found out in, in general about health, how is that impacting our health system these days? Not in two minutes, but uh, uh, let's start here. The, the, the advancements in technology are just absolutely amazing. The medical systems, advancements in technology, um, it, it, it's incredible, and every one of us should uh, thank God for them. Mm -hmm. For instance, we are the leader. When it comes to 911, the emergency-based care in America, there's no better place to live. It is absolutely amazing, the life-saving technology that our hospitals have. Mm -hmm. It, it, sometimes it's really, really, it's almost like st uh, Star Trek mm -hmm. in terms of the things that our medical providers can do somebody medevac, helicoptering people. You know, I had a patient come in the other day, he had a heart attack, dropped, he was clinically dead on the sidewalk. They saved his life because Jersey Shore Medical Center was able to save his life within, you know, a very short period of time. And we all have stories like that. Mm -hmm. And I think from an emergency-based perspective, it's great. The other perspective is that we all should be using our internal medicine doctors, our family practitioners, yearly a full medical exam, a physical with comprehensive blood panels, because that technology, mm -hmm. even so some of it is a physical exam, we all should be using 
yearly because to catch things early, there is a higher incidence rate of treatment and survival. Mm -hmm. So whether it be cancer or type 2 diabetes like we're talking about or looking at our uh, history like, uh, of cardiology, whether or not we have a precursor to having a heart attack, all of these things need to be looked at by our GPs, family medicine doctors, and our OBGYN for women to catch disease processes in their early state. And then if we come back from the break, I'll be happy then we could maybe go into what treatment protocols, where does it vary between diagnosing a problem and then the treatment considerations. Because mm -hmm. that's true. I mean, so many people uh, start to wonder, uh, where do we go from here? And that, that's a good topic. Uh, hopefully we'll come out of the break with. You listen to Tandem Radio Live, and we're here with Dr. James Prudy, and it has just such a wealth of knowledge about health. And, and again, health is wealth. And uh, you ask anyone who's ill, I don't care how much money they have or, uh, or anything along those lines, when they're not healthy, life really is a struggle. And so uh, if you're somebody out there that's struggling with your health, uh, you may want to contact Dr. Prudian and find out how you can get back on track. No matter where you are, he'll take an email from you, and we'll take emails from you at info at tandemradio.com. We'd love to hear your questions. If you have a question about health specifically, we'll pass it along to Dr. Prudian. I'm sure he'll uh, respond. And um, uh, we're here to help you. The good news on business here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got a lot more for you right after the break, so you stay tuned. It's going to be a powerful segment next. Well, welcome back to Tandem Radio Live. This is your host, Glenn DeLake, and on the good news on business here with Dr. James Prudian of Natural Health Care, and um, he's got so much information we're going to try to pack into this last segment, but again, I know we'll have him back on in the future. And again, if you have any questions out of today's show, info at tandemradio.com. That's I-N-F-O at tandemradio.com. We'll get to your questions and get back to you with that, whether it's a question about business or a question about health, and uh, sometimes they tie in together. Now, we're going to try to pack in some stuff here, so uh, let's get to, right to it. Diagnosis versus treatment. We're going to talk about options there. And I also want to talk about wellness care at work, because that ties right into to business. So let's start. We've talked about some diagnosis. It's important to uh, track this stuff down and know about it in advance. That's why, like it says uh, in Proverbs 7, 7, 8, do not be wise in your own eyes. Uh, I think it's so important that we, we check with our doctors, we check with the information, we find out from people like Dr. Prudian uh, about where to go and how to do it. And we have to realize that God wants us, as it says in 3 John 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So God's saying right there, it's not enough to get your soul going along well. He wants your whole body physically fit and doing well also. That doesn't mean you have to be a muscle man builder or anything of that nature, but you do need to take care of yourself. And uh, we talked about diagnosis, so let's move into the treatment realm. Yeah, let's go now. Let's go back to Einstein. <coughs> it was first 50 minutes talking about right. it, maybe the last 10 minutes. And then I think many people don't realize what the word DR stands for in front of a, uh, a person's name. DR means you go to school the first. To be a DR, you have to be able to diagnose. So if you have a diagnosis, we go to our doctors for diagnoses. Mm -hmm. But if we go to an orthopedic, an orthopedic surgeon or an orthopedist for shoulder pain and we're diagnosed with supraspinatus tendonitis, that's a muscle in the shoulder, for instance, mm -hmm. that doctor may have a treatment protocol of cortisone, cortisone shot and rest and ice, or he might write a prescription for physical therapy. Whereas another doctor looking at supraspinatus tendonitis might go right into ultrasound therapy and icy heat. What I'm saying is, and that's a real simple example, Glenn, we have to look at the doctors we're going to for treatment options. Mm -hmm. And our doctors need to render to us, what are my options? Mm -hmm. For instance, a low back disc, back to the physical model that we were talking about before. A lower back disc, there's many times in my office I see seven different people giving seven different opinions mm -hmm. on it. So health diagnosis is relatively, not easy, but many times it's easier for a patient to understand the diagnosis than the treatment options. Mm -hmm. Because here's the MRI, it's black and white, or here's the physical exam, it's black and white. So the treatment options are where I want to equip people into being smarter, to be more informed, but not to be cluttered or fragmented. What is the science behind the condition? What is the literal truth behind the, di uh, behind the diagnosis? And what are my options? Mm. And I think that's a very important picture for anyone to take away, depending upon the condition that they're, that they, that's in front of them or that they're, they're looking at. So literally, we just literally need to take more responsibility over our health care and not just assume... And know who your providers right. are. Right. Okay. Know who your providers are. 
You know, you have there's a great level of trust between doctor and patient. Who right. are your providers? Who are you listening to? Who are you getting information from? Mm. And uh, you know, sometimes you do have to change doctors. I, I had a situation I'll never forget when we were uh, when our kids were very young, and I had a doctor who. Uh, the, the teacher had mentioned that one of my sons might have ADD. I went to the doctor, and my mm -hmm. wife uh, told me he might have ADD. And I'll never forget the doctor said, "Well, I put him on Ritalin, you know." And uh, I said to him, "I said, uh, boy, that was pretty quick. You put him on Ritalin." He goes, "Well, it's not going to hurt him if he doesn't need it," which I was shocked. And this was a, a renowned, a well, very well-known pediatrician. And I'll never forget. I said to him, "I said, Doc, let me ask you a question. Would you put your kids on Ritalin?" And he said, "Well, all three of my kids are on Ritalin." I, when we walked out, I said to my wife, we got to find another doctor. Okay, so you and went through diagnosis and treatment option. You yeah. disagreed with the treatment option, right. and you went, okay. The, next, and, that's and the point process. was that I went to another doctor right. and to get another opinion, and it was an ADD, and he never needed drugs, and the kid's doing great in college today, and he did great in school. And then we were Glenn, I, I tell you, you brought up wellness at work. Wellness at work and that initiative is to do that. It is to cut through the chase, get through the garbage, what physically, nutritionally, or psychologically are we going to engage in and talk about so the audience walks away with a set of solutions mm -hmm. for, their, for their life so that they could go implement? And I always give my audiences books they could go read because it's like anything else. Are we going to take the ball? As right. parents, for instance, right. mm -hmm. are we going to take the ball? I can't, like, for instance, my parents with pediatric obesity, but the children with it. Uh, Trim Kids is a book that I recommend. Why? Because Dr. Southern, who wrote that book, did an exceptional job of outlining exactly what this condition is and how to do a 12-week program with a, with a child who's, who's uh, obese. Well, let's talk more about wellness at work. Sure. I know you go out and speak to uh, uh, large groups of people and yep. different sized companies and so forth. What can uh, um, uh, a business owner do to help his employees with Wellness at Work? Well, Wellness at Work is that kind of an initiative. First of all, the HR directors love us because we're a value-added service to their company. Yeah. Many times I'm doing lunch and learns. So I, in, I have spoken at probably... You get to choose the menu? <laughs> <laughs> Many times I walk in and at the time of that, that typically... See this? Eat Don't eat it. <laughs> Stop eating. Yeah, that's, a, that's an area of contention, but I tell them you get a break for today. But yeah, we go and do lunch and learns or keynotes. Um, I've, I've keynoted a number of events. I built, for instance, um, a large organization, a uh, well-known uh, international company hired me. I wrote three 90-minute programs mm -hmm. for, their, for their employees. One was on physical, one was on nutritional, and the other one was on psychological. So we spent four and a half hours over a period of four months with the um, attendees from that company. Many companies are now finding that if they have a wellness at work program, one of my programs, they can then circle back to their insurance carrier to get a rebate on their insurance coverage because they're doing something proactively for their employees. So it has an impact on their bottom line. Yeah, they're back to the bottom line yeah. because health care coverage and the cost of health care, the staggering cost of that. I spoke as a keynote at the Garden State Human Resource Association two years in a row. Um, I did breakout sessions, and I spoke to groups of HR directors just on how do we lower health care costs? Mm -hmm. What do we do internally? Not just send people a newsletter. I mean, that's the extent of some of these wellness programs. Right. We have to be literal in terms of the education and have direct follow-through. And that's what Wellness at Work does. And it comes to your facility. I'm a plug-and-play. <laughs> you just plug me in and let me go. Tell me how long I got. And that's uh, we have about 25 separate programs that uh -huh. I deliver. Yeah. Do you see results from those? Are people reaching out to you? The emails are wonderful. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I have what I call my treasure ch chest, and it's my rocking chair. When I'm in a rocking chair someday, if I, you know, that, at that age, and I'm going to be sitting watching my great grandkids play on my front lawn, right. I go through the emails, the things that people have said about me as a clinician or me as an educator. They truly mean a lot. It's the compassionate side, and they they open up their hearts to you within the impact that you've made on their lives of opening doors that they can now walk through. So wellness at work has had a, a tremendous this impact. The testimonials from HR directors and CEOs alike, um, you know, hang on my walls in my in my company because it's a real testimony to the impact that we've made in people's life, and they were unaware that this was available to them. Right. right. Yeah. So it's cool. It's really cool. So it is effective. So business owners, you know, there is several benefits to having somebody like Dr. Pugin come in and do 
uh, a wellness at work type seminar. I know the employees appreciate it. It's so important. I, I was listening to a segment of the show of the uh, on the bridge this morning before I came in, and uh, Chuck Colson was talking about how important it is to, as a Christian business owner, to show your employees how much you care and uh, to let them know that their wellness and health is important to you. And this is a perfect example where Dr. Uh, Prudian's team comes in and does wellness at work. And you can find out more about that at prudianhealthcare.com. That's prudianhealthcare.com. And just so you know, and, and James knows this, I don't give out information on the air lightly. Uh, we look into these things. We know that they're effective. And if we feel it's on our heart that it can benefit our listeners, that's when we give this information out. One of the things we always tell our guests is this is not going to be an infomercial. So this is important, important stuff, and I hope that you'll take the time. So any last thoughts you want to leave uh, our listeners with uh, as far as wellness and health? And, uh, um, you know, we talk about diagnosis. We talk about treatment. Are there some points you want to get out there to make sure they can – or something they can do to start start going in the right direction? Yeah. Um, after your prayer time, mm -hmm. tomorrow, today, take five minutes with a piece of paper and just start writing down the things in your own personal health that you're unhappy with mm -hmm. and look at them and read them. From that point, don't try to solve them by yourself because many of them are very complex and it could become very confusing because the road to wellness and the road to feeling better, functioning better, and living longer is right there. It's just a matter of identifying what God's design, God's infrastructure, and God's plan was for us and how we've gotten a, a, a little bit away from it. And I wish everybody, you know, a happy Thanksgiving. Eat well that day, because <laughs> that is a day it's okay. Yeah. It's a little bit of a cheat day, and to give thanks to him is always a glory. Amen, amen. That's so important. And, you know, again, it goes back to that 3 John 2. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And I like how you started off with the prayer. Uh, you said after your prayer. Uh, it's so important to reach out to God. I mean, Hezekiah and two kings, he was on deathbed and uh, went to God, and God decided to give him 15 more years. He sent the prophet to tell him that. And God has a plan for you, and if you're seeking him, uh, one of the things he wants you to do is take care of yourself and take better care of yourself and think about things like this. And not that we should be anxious or worry about them per se, but we can live healthier, happier lives. And people like Dr. Prudian are out there. James, I want to thank you for coming in today. I know you have a super busy schedule, and I know we're both on the run. <laughs> the show is over, so um, we're going to hit the road. So I want to thank, thank the team today. They did a great job. I'd like to welcome Allie, our new producer. She's doing a terrific job. And uh, um, also, Robert, for coming all the way down and coming in, and uh, it's always good to have you. Thanks for our newest staff members today as well. And uh, we're here every Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, with the good news on business. We'll see you next Saturday right here on these FM stations and on the Internet at TandemRadio.com. Don't forget that. Check it out right after the show, TandemRadio.com, filled with resources that can help your business. God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.